Hi, my name is Thomas. I'm working for Metros. Excellent. Metros is manufacturing for more than 40 years valve test benches. Today, we would like to share our experience with you. This means we are going to explain you how you can test a control valve. For this purpose, we are going to use our CSV 5200. Means we have 50 tons clamping force and we can use it up to a diameter of 200 millimeter or 8 inch. In this video, we are going to test a 1 inch Samsung control valve with a pneumatic actuator. That's for the pressure rating of PN16, means 16 bar normal working pressure. For the clamping of the valve, we are going to use our automatic sealing head. Please take care that you're going to use the right diameter. You can test it also manually and just see if the sealing will properly seal at the flange side. Please ensure that you're using always automatic sealing heads with the same diameter. It's marked on the sealing heads themselves. Additionally, you find an information, an A for the active side, which is on the left hand side if you're in front of the test bench and the B side, the inactive one, which is on the right hand side of the test bench. So A on the left hand side. And B on the right hand side. Just place the valve into the clamping area and tighten it manually, slightly by hand. You don't need to force it. The force will be provided later on by our automatic sealing heads. As you can see, I still can move the valve in the clamping. This means there's no force, unnormal force, on the flange side. Some other valve test bench manufacturers are using hydraulic clamping, but this means they are clamping already with the valve without pressure inside. And this may cause changes in the geometry of the valve seat area and of course, this will also change the measuring result. In our case, the automatic sealing heads will increase very smoothly and softly with the increasing test pressure, the force. So everything is balanced and you never get unnormal force from outside. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to connect the control unit with the pneumatic driven actuator. And here I can adjust the pressure I would like to use for opening or closing the actuator. I even can close it manually. Or open it. This is important if we are going to do later on the shell test. There are two different tests we would like to show you today. The first one is the so-called seat leakage test. This one is going to be performed with low pressure air. Here in our case, we are going to use 3.5 bar. The valve is going to be closed and afterwards we are going to measure in the outlet how much air is passing through the valve in a normal closed condition. The second test we are going to show you is the so-called shell test or housing test with high pressure water. As pressure we use the normal pressure multiplied by 1.5. In our case we have a PN16 valve means we are going to test it with 24 bar water. The reason why we are going to do first the seat leakage test is actually the valve is dry and there's no risk that we are going to blow some water which is remaining maybe in the circuit after the shell test into our flow meters. The next step will be to connect our flow meter cascade. Means I'm going to open the outlet valve, connect here with this hose our flow meter cascade Now I have adjusted 3.5 bar here on my pressure regulator in front of my needle valve. If I open the needle valve now, I'm going to pressurize the 3.5 bar into my valve. The outlet is open, the valve is still closed. So I can check now with our flow meter cascade what is the leakage. You always should start with the flow meter, the biggest measuring range. You open this one and there's no reaction. 
open the next smaller one and close the big one. Still no reaction over there, so we start the next one and stop the bigger one. Here we can see that we have a leakage actually of 230 nanoliter per hour. To decide if the leakage is good or not, you can use our free of charge leak calculator, which is available for Android at Google Play or for iOS at iTunes. You can get also free of charge PC version from our download site. Simply choose the standard you would like to work with Select also the leak class, in this case we can select class 2, then input all needed values and simply calculate the result. The leak limit would be 0.57 cubic meter per hour, but you can convert it also to different measurements. In our case we converted it to liters per hour and here we have a converted leak up to 572 normal liter per hour. So this means our valve has been in range. When you have finished the seat leakage test, close the needle valve for the air pressure and open the release valve. When the pressure is gone, the warning light is turned off. Now it is safe to open the clamping or to remove the valve if you want. Before we start the shell test, please ensure that you have mounted the gauge with a suitable measuring range. Here I have a gauge of 0 to 600 bar. Our test pressure is going to be only 24 bar, so it will be hard to read it and also the accuracy will not be that good. And this reason I'm going to change right now to a 0 to 250 bar gauge. The ideal one would be to use a 0 to 60 bar gauge. Unfortunately, I don't have this one available now. Before we start the shell test, please ensure that you have removed the coupling from our flow meter cascade, just to ensure that we will not blow water into our flow meters. Then open the needle valve and the output. Switch on the control pressure for our actuator to open the valve completely. And if I switch over now to filling, the electric filling pump starts pre-filling the valve with water. Now I can close the needle valve in the output. And the electric filling pump will stop automatically. What had happened now is we have filled the valve just to the center level. But now there is a risk that there are still some air remaining in the valve body, which is not good at all for the shell test. So in this reason, we have installed in our test rig a special vacuum system. If I switch over to vacuum now, we are evacuating the rest of the air out of the valve. Then I'm going to refill the valve and I can be sure that the valve is now completely filled with water. After that, I switch back to a hydrostatic test and I can now pressurize with my needle valve to the required test pressure. After the filling process, I can pre-adjust the test pressure in front of my needle valve. Means it's not going directly into our test valve. You can see this test bench is able to test in between zero up to 600 bar. But in our case, we won't like to perform this shell test at 24 bar. So we just smoothly increase the pressure a little bit. And you see it's going up immediately around 30, 40 bar. And if I open now my needle valve, I will pressurize the control valve to the pressure I want. So by opening smoothly the needle valve, I can control the test pressure. If you remember, we want to adjust it to 24 bar. 
the needle valve is closed, 24 bar are inside of my control valve, and if there's no pressure drop, the test was successful. You can do also a visual test if there's no water leaking somewhere from the valve body. Normal tests are 30 seconds or even one minute, but if there's no pressure drop, even after this time, you can be sure this shell test was successful. After the shell test, please release the test pressure with the center needle valve. The warning lamp shows us that there is no more pressure on our valve. Switch off the control air of the actuator. Remove the actuator air and now it is safe to remove the valve from the clamping. Just get some more water out of it. And now you are ready for the next test. I hope you have been able to enjoy our video. We just wanted to give you a brief idea how our test bench works on control valves. Of course, you can use it also for shutoff valve, gate valve, globe valves or any other type of valves. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. In case you're going to use a different valve test bench, please ensure that you read the manual carefully. And please always respect the regulations which are valid in your area. Stay safe. Over and out. Excellent.